Welcome to Guelph Citadel. Those of you who are here in person and joining us online on this Christ the King Sunday. Uh, if you were intently listening to the words that were just sung for us, and we're going to get to sing them together throughout this service, uh, you will hear that theme of, of the King. Worthy is the Lamb uh, who reigns victorious. And today on Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year, before we begin Advent next week, uh, we will acknowledge that he is king of the universe, king of our lives. And uh, today that will be our focus. I'm going to draw your attention to uh, the screens, uh, both here and at home, um, for a short video. So next week, we begin our Advent journey. We will make our way towards the stable. But today, we acknowledge on this last Sunday of the Christian year that it is Christ the King Sunday. And this little video reminds us from beginning to end, he is Alpha and Omega, Christ our King. Well, we're glad you're with us today. I do want to uh, make a few announcements, and uh, then we're going to uh, move right into our service. Uh, and we can join our voices uh, with the team behind me and, uh, and declare our praises and our glory and honor to Christ our King. I do want to remind you that we're continuing to um, sign up volunteers for our Christmas Kettle campaign. It is officially underway. Those of you who were with us this past Thursday night uh, for our kickoff, we had a great time. We had a, a wonderful evening of caroling with the band and hot chocolate and uh, some of our special guests who were with us uh, to help us kick off our Christmas campaign for 2021. 
our online um, bell ringer volunteer sign up portal, the Better Impact is up and running and uh, you can go uh, to our uh, church website, guelphsa.ca forward slash kettles and you can sign up there, pick your shifts, pick the day and the hours and, uh, and get signed up for those kettle shifts. I know, uh, I know Tim would be happy to get a bunch of, uh, bunch of volunteers. If you, uh, if you have any questions about kettles after the service, tap Tim. Tim is uh, giving uh, some direction and oversight to our kettle campaign this year as our coordinator, and, uh, and he'll have all of the answers for you. If he doesn't have the answers, I know he knows where to find them, and he will look very hard in order to be able to find the answers that you might need if he hasn't got them. So we're grateful uh, for Tim and his team for looking after that this year, and uh, I think, I think in an email we sent out or a Facebook post, we had like 1,606 shifts to cover in this year's Christmas Kettle campaign. So that's a lot. Of, I know, look at Wendell, you're, you're shaking your head. Are you nervous, Wendell? Have you got all your guys lined up to help, Wendell? <laughs> you might need to recruit a few more. Uh, a lot of shifts, but we can do it when we work together, and we're so grateful for our community partners as well uh, as members of our congregation who, uh, who help us with that. Now, what do we have next on our scrolling screen there? Uh, we're continuing to collect for Better Futures Child Sponsorship Program um, through the month of November. So right through until next weekend, if you uh, want to make a contribution to that. Uh, we're, we're reaching out to our congregation because we have some uh, church groups who uh, normally would do fundraisers throughout the year and things like that to support Better Futures. Uh, our women's ministries, our 55 plus club, but through the pandemic, they've not been able to do those, uh, those things in order to raise that money. So, so we are kind of tapping our congregation. If you uh, are interested in, in helping out in that way, you can, uh, there are envelopes um, when you leave the sanctuary this morning at the offering table. There are envelopes there specifically for Brighter Futures if you want to write a check or leave a bit of cash. You can also use your regular tithing envelopes and just make a note on there that you've uh, set aside some for uh, Brighter Futures. And you can also go online, guelphsa.ca slash donate, and you can click from the drop-down menu, um, general fund, and then you can put a little message in the box that it's for Brighter Futures. Now, what else do we have here? Okay, so while next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, and we will have an opportunity to worship together, it will be kind of together from afar. You'll be at home. There will be an Advent. Our first Sunday of Advent service will be available online. Uh, Sunday morning. We will not be gathering here for Be the Church Sunday. You will be uh, encouraged to be out in your neighborhood, maybe going for a walk, meeting some people. Uh, and today, we're actually doing something a little different. We, Leanne and I have been connecting with folks uh, who last month on their uh, Be the Church Sunday uh, had some amazing experiences. And we're going to hear from one of them today and what, what that's meant to them. Um, and it's an amazing way to do it and time to do it on Christ the King Sunday, when we acknowledge Christ the King of our lives and what that means, that he reigns victorious over us and invites us to be a part of bringing his kingdom to earth. So next Sunday, no church service in person, but there will be a service online and we encourage you to uh, be active in some way in your community. And then also next Sunday, the 28th, in the evening at 7 o'clock, we're going to be hosting here in person a blue Christmas service. If you're not familiar with what a blue Christmas service is, it's essentially uh, a service designed to bring people together and to acknowledge that for many during the Christmas season, there is a lot of emotion and grief and sadness when we have experienced the loss of loved ones or the loss of some situation in life. Uh, so that when we approach the holiday season, we do so sometimes with a heaviness. And we want to acknowledge that. We want to recognize that that's okay. And it also doesn't have to hamper the holidays for us. So we're going to come together. Uh, you do have to register because it is an in-person event. So the registration is open online. Same way you register for church on Sunday, you'll see a blue Christmas service link. And we invite you to register for that and, uh, and come and join us. Um, the link is also on our Facebook group um, as well as uh, through, our, through our website for our worship sign-up. Now, I'm going to invite you to stand. The worship team, is uh, they've been playing through, um, so the, the words will be familiar for us, hopefully. We're going to sing together, um, and they're going to lead us before the throne of our King in worship this morning.
Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. The floods have risen up, O Lord. The floods have roared like thunder. The floods have lifted their pounding waves. But mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore, the Lord above is mightier than these. Your royal laws cannot be changed. Your reign, O Lord, is holy forever and ever. Please remain standing as we get to sing and share in our opening song together, Ancient of Days. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, replied Pilate? It was your people and your chief priests who have handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight 
to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king, said Pilate. So next week is Be the Church Sunday. And last month we had our first Be the Church Sunday. And it was really, really great over the last couple of weeks um, for Leanne and I, as I mentioned, to have some conversations with those of you who, who kind of stepped out in faith, did something different, did something new on that Sunday. And, and we've heard some amazing stories about what God has been doing through you as you've engaged in your community, in your world on Be the Church Sunday. One of the things that we said that we uh, were committed to doing was creating opportunities for us to hear from each other about our Be the Church Sunday uh, experience and, um, and how God is using you to reach others as you participate in that initiative. So today I'm going to invite Chris uh, Cummins to come on down. Come on down. Chris is a game show. He's got to come all the way from the nosebleed section. Um, and Chris is going to join me down here because uh, Chris shared a little bit of his Be the Church experience with us. And we wanted to create an opportunity, and that's kind of that's kind of our approach today. It's kind of like a kind of like a testimony time via interview, um, but it's important for us to be able to hear from each other what God is doing in us and what God is doing through us. So, uh, Chris, this is your spot right here. Have a seat, thank you. And I'm going to sit over here. And if you're comfortable, I think we're about two meters apart here. So, if you're comfortable, you can uh, lose the mask or you can keep it on. It's up to you. Chris and I are going to chat a little bit about his Be the Church experience. He's going to uh, uh, share uh, what that was like for him. Hopefully, hopefully you will hear something of what God has been doing in Chris's life as he responds to that call to be the church in, in his everyday life. Um, now, I'm sitting here because the timekeeper is sitting over there, and Leanne has got the stopwatch going. <laughs> And she's going to give me the, uh, the side eye. So, oh, Is this working now? We're good to go? Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, they're gonna, they'll, they'll, as you talk, they'll, uh, they'll do their thing. So, Chris, thank you for uh, being willing to do this. Pleasure. Opportunity to have a forced audience. A forced for audience. That's right. Five to 35 minutes, depending on how I feel this 35. morning. I think she's got us uh, capped at 20. So she'll I've be given maybe a five-minute countdown. I've got stuff oh, to say. I've got yeah. stuff to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chris, can you tell us a little bit about when you, when you heard that we were going to be launching into this initiative, this Be the Church Sunday and, and, and all that that entailed, that we wouldn't be gathering here once a month, but we were being encouraged to go and live our faith out in our community. Can you tell us, um, kind of what was your initial response when you heard that that was happening? So my, my initial response was actually one of concern um, because, uh, not for the reason you might think, um, <laughs> Uh, because I came up in a time and culture where engaging with your community meant um, meant engaging on the church's terms. So uh, when I was in university and high school and that kind of stuff, Christian groups at school, those types of things, um, it was random walk-up evangelism, mm -hmm. right? Like, and only that. It wasn't about, re if you were focused on relational stuff, there was something wrong, you were scared, you were nervous to share. So right. when, when I first heard, oh, we're going to go out into the community, I, was, I had this vision of walking up to random strangers in the Parker and Stone Road Mall and saying, you know, let me tell you about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which there, there may be a time for that kind of yeah. conversation, uh, but as a overall strategy, uh, I think it is incomplete. Mm. Uh, so I was, I was nervous that that might be um, where we were headed. Yeah, you know what? Growing up, I went to a boarding, Christian boarding school, and uh, we had forced evangelism on certain weekends of the year. And it was the, f the opening line was never, hey, can I introduce myself to you? It was, have you heard the four spiritual laws? And you either scare people away right away, yeah. <laughs> or hopefully you get somebody who nibbles a little bit. And is, is yeah, at the very least, you're really reinforcing yeah. those lines yeah, between absolutely. the church and the community. Absolutely, yeah. So what did this, what did this kind of forced initiative. What did this, this new way of, of thinking about being church, um, what did it force you to think about um, theologically, personally? Um, what were some of the things that came up for you? 
So first, I'm glad we have a timekeeper because yeah, now that I'm yeah. up here with a microphone, I understand the, <laughs> the draw to keep no people yeah. over their lunch and sitting here. Yeah. Great, yeah. yeah. So, um, so theologically, I actually didn't have to think about that much. Um, and I don't think I've ever said this to you, but I'll say it to you and then give you the opportunity to correct it, <laughs> um, is attending church every single Sunday has never been an essential thing for me. So the idea of losing a Sunday a month to instead go out and engage with family, friends, community, initiatives, whatever, um, theologically caused me zero concern. Okay. Um, I'll pause there in case. Yeah, nobody's case leaving. <laughs> okay, nobody's, good, yeah. nobody's got up and left yet. So, um, so, so theologically, it, it was great. Um, I actually think uh, the church in general, not this church, but churches in general as well, can do... Uh, more to blur those lines, which mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get into it during this conversation. Yeah. Um, personally, though, it caused me to uh, reflect on how I engage with people outside my mm -hmm. social circle. Because uh, my initial reaction was awesome. <laughs> I can have, you know, um, like Aaron and Chris hand over for, for lunch, or I can use it to go visit my siblings out in Alora or whatever. And it's just people that, to be honest, I already have sufficiently deep right. relationships with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then then that that becomes part of that question is is are there people who I'm in relationship with who are not kind of the immediate family, the close tight knit group? And I think a couple of weeks ago we acknowledged here in the service that for for many of us the pandemic has been hard because the church for for some of us is our primary social network, our social community. Um, and so coming to church on Sunday is a part of connecting with that social network. It's a part of being able to worship together with that social network, things that are, that are still important. Um, but yeah, but I think, I think you're, you're, you're catching that it is, it is resting in something that says the call of Christ on our lives is more than just being the gathered church. It is equally about being the sent church. Um, and, and living our lives beyond the safety uh, of the church walls. I think I've said this before to some people. I'm not sure if I've said it from the pulpit. Um, we, we, we're, we're proud to a certain extent, and not, not in a bad way, of having the, the term citadel in our church name, Guelph Citadel. Um, but I think we all would do well to be reminded of what a citadel's purpose is. A citadel's purpose is to protect those inside of it. Uh, if you think of the Middle, Middle Ages, the medieval days and things like that, when a castle was built and the enemy was attacking, all of the people of the village, the townspeople, would come and run and get saved by gathering in the citadel, storing up water and supplies and all that kind of stuff. So we were protected from the outside world. But can you see the, the challenge with that as the church who is also called to be a sent people, <laughs> the people that God wants us to reach are not inside here. They're not in the citadel, they're outside in the world. And, uh, and so we've got we've to be careful to kind of keep a balance there and, and not get, you know, too comfortable inside the walls that we never go outside the walls. So, yeah, no, that's really, that's really huge, really important. So, so where, where, where did God take you when, when, when you began thinking about what am I going to do on Be the Church Sunday? Where did God kind of take you? So I've... I've always been really good at gathering. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm uh, extroverted, and I have very little filter. Um, so, <laughs> so a lot of people, even people in this room who you know I've, I've spoken to for a few hours have probably heard things about me that they wouldn't expect to hear from someone they've only spoken to for a few right. hours right. because I just do that. Um, but for, for me, it was about deepening relationship was mm. kind of the first reaction. So. Um, looking around uh, my neighborhood and, and the neighbors that I, you know, chat with when I park my car or take, take, taking my groceries out and looking in this building too. So, I, I mean, I take your point that we're called to be sent, mm. uh, but also there are people in this building every Sunday that I gather with mm. but have no relationship yeah. with or, or, or little relationship with. Mm. Um, and uh, that's that was the first piece I was thinking. I also appreciated the flexibility. So when you circulated the um, the draft document that you or that, not the draft document, the communication about what this might look like for people, uh, the the opportunity to use it to 
uh, build connections and relationships in your family or take time for yourself or take time for initiatives that are important to you, um, how those could all potentially be the church mm. uh, was something that I was pretty excited about. Nice, nice. So from a personal perspective, where do you see, or maybe where do you hope God will take us as a people through this experience? Uh, I think two, two places. So one, it, it's, we're, it's happening at a rather fortuitous, is that the right word, Dad? Is that the right word? Um, <laughs> rather fortuitous time or, right. or serendipitous or whatever mm. it is, um, or maybe, you know, God-led time, um, if you want to be Christian about it. Um, <laughs> The sanctified. <laughs> yeah. sanctified moment. <laughs> That's right. We spent the last 18 months mm. uh, separate, right? So we've, we've had communities and, and we've been doing our best to stay connected. But now I think more than any time in the history of Guelph Citadel anyway, and unless someone's going to correct me about history that I don't know, um, we need to consciously rebuild the community mm. um, that we have in this building and also consciously rebuild how we connect with the community that we're a part of outside this building. Um, so for me, it's going to be about relationships. Mm. Uh, it's going to be about uh, connecting with folks. It's going to be about you know having neighbors over and asking real questions, like taking an interest in people as persons mm. instead of as... Um, as souls to be saved and counted. Right. Um, yeah. I think you've hit on something there about relationship, and, and to me what I'm hearing is a, is a, a level of relationship, an authenticity or, or a depth uh, that moves us beyond, you know, why don't you come over for supper and we'll get caught up on the week and the kids and the job and the, all of that kind of stuff to the, you know, I'm really struggling with this, or hey, what do you think about you know this and and bringing those relationships to a deeper level? I think that's the. And I can share a specific example okay. about that actually. Yeah. So and this didn't happen on a be the church Sunday, but it, I still I still think it counts as being the church. Um, <laughs> I know we're only supposed to be the church on Sunday, so um, <laughs> so the uh, and the people in the band will have heard this, so I apologize. Uh, I play in the band. And at our rehearsal a couple weeks ago, I, I was on devotions for like, I don't know, 18 weeks in a row. I, Maggie, you can remind me. Um, I was sharing devotions with the band. And uh, the way I shared the devotions landed with one of the members. And I didn't get clearance ahead of time to share specifics, so I'll be, I'll be anonymous here. But um, landed a little bit awkwardly with one of the members. And they called me up, or actually they sent me an email, and said, hey, can we meet for coffee? I have mm. some questions. Uh, and my first reaction was, oh no, what did I, what did I say? Because it was an older member of the band. And so my, my kind of gut reaction was, I'm about to be rebuked or I'm about right, to be right. corrected. Um, and, and so we agreed to meet for coffee and we sat down in a Tim Hortons and, and they opened with, look, when you first shared this, I felt sad because you seemed to be relying on your own strength and not God's strength. I've, I've been struggling with anxiety and that kind of stuff. And I'm, again, I'm sure I've shared this with too many of you. So, um, so Leah, I really appreciated when you shared your anxiety yeah. the other day. You have a way. whole online audience though now too, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, she, I feel like you've been relying on your strength and not God's strength to get through these difficult times. Um, and, and he said, so I, I felt that and I wanted to share that perspective with you. And then I thought, and this is, I'm still talking as the person who met with me. And then I thought, am I even entitled to share that perspective mm. with Chris? Like why, like who am I to call this guy up and say, by the way, you don't seem to be relying on God enough. Uh, and, and then moved past that and said, um, you know, I don't even know where Chris is. Like, mm. I, I know Chris, I see him every week at band practice and again on Sundays, but I don't, e I don't even know if this is justified or what he's talking about. So, um, so instead, I'm gonna open with, how are you? Mm. Like, how are you doing? Where are you in, in your journey as a person? Not in your journey as a bandsman and as a sure. salvation. Like, yeah. how are you doing? And from there, we had a great hour conversation. I shared my perspective, shared um, some of the tools and things I've been relying on in my journey through COVID and anxiety and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And it was 
spectacular. Now I want to talk again, right? And, and right. it was, yeah. I was a person yeah. to be engaged with yeah. and a relationship to be built as opposed to a problem to be fixed. Yeah, or a project. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> check, check somebody on a to-do list or something, yeah, no. And, and you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking back to um, the time we spent learning about what it, or being reminded of what it means to be a one another church, right? To be to love one another and to bear with one another and to hold one another accountable and and you know at times to be able to be in that space with one another to correct rebuke question um but and i'm sure i would have been corrected if i had <laughs> if i had said more things right, that right. caused concern right like like i i got yeah. the impression that would have been raised fortunately yeah. we were more on the same page than we yeah. thought we were so but that's a good space to be creating right i think i think as the church we um we don't do that often enough and I, I don't know that we necessarily do it well enough, um, but something that we absolutely should be, should be nurturing. So back to Be the Church Sunday, what, is, what, are, what are a couple of things you like or what is exciting to you about, as a church, us setting aside this time to focus on this? So I already shared the flexibility yeah. piece. That's most exciting to me, like the fact that, um, that it can change and it seems so obvious once you put it out there, right? That mm -hmm. like, oh, being the church means different things at different times. Like, oh, yeah, okay, of course. Yeah. Um, as opposed to always coming here. Um, for instance, last Sunday, or last Be the Church Sunday, rather, um, we'd had a crazy weekend. We went to, uh, we had a funeral. We had uh, two wedding events. We had all sorts of things that we had to do. Um, and it was also my son's seventh birthday. Mm. And so for our Be the Church Sunday, that was the first time we had a family had got to hang out for more than probably 20 minutes right. um, that, that yeah. week together. So we spent time together and we mm. went to Wonderland and it was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I had a chance to ask my kids how they were doing, engage with them in new activities that they'd never experienced mm. before. And um, again, you guys can publicly or quietly correct me that that's not about the church, but I felt like, I felt like it was where God needed us to be um, yeah, that absolutely. weekend. Um, the, ne the next thing that's exciting about is this is just the fact that it's happening. Mm. Um, because if you want to randomly evangelize, if you want to bring up your faith uh, in a non-threatening way, I would highly encourage all of you to say my pastor's canceled church once a month so we could hang out with our friends. Like, that is a great way to bring up a conversation. Sure, yeah, yeah. great conversation. And, and it's been fun. I've been doing yeah. that. Oh, good, yeah. good. So as you've done that then, uh, as, you've, you know, as you've told people out there that, yeah, our pastor's canceled church once a month so we could do this, what kind of responses are you getting from them? Uh, it's... Uh, almost universally positive. Really? Um, yeah, I, I think inside and outside the church is positive. Um, I know there are people in this building that are skeptical. There are, there are Christians in my life that are skeptical. Mm -hmm. My father-in-law we had a Zoom call with this morning. He's, he sometimes asks a lot of questions about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the uh, outside the church, it's great. Like, it's, mm. people see it as, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, I'm... I'm I'm not coming to church with you. Like, I'm, I'm not going to come to church on a Sunday morning if I feel like you guys aren't a part of the community or if I feel like it's just a building full of weirdos. Mm. I would rather hang out with, uh, with people who, who know me and I know them, and they demonstrate a real interest in caring about the people around them, and this is an opportunity to do that. Mm. So, yeah, that's been good. So living, living your life in relationship with people Nurturing those relationships in the church is a part of that for you. Um, that's important, recognizing that we can come together and, and we can be the church, the gathered people of God, and we're also called to be out there. Um, I, you know, I think you've, you've hit on a piece that is a, a growing concern um, for, for followers of Jesus and for the church uh, at large, especially in the West. Um, the invitation that you give to somebody to come to church, that kind of blank, hey, why don't you come to church with me? I think is, is, is significantly getting less and less of a positive response in these days. Um, and, and, and you're right, there, there, is a, there are stereotypes are out there, there's a stigma out there, I'm, I'm not, am I going to look like that? Am I going to know what to do and what to say and how to talk and how to be? Will people welcome me or not? Um, and, and, and the church has a bit of a PR problem um, in this day and age, and we've got a lot of work to do. But you're talking about engaging in relationship, in life, real life with people and um and i get the three minute warning um 
and uh, <laughs> see how time flies, right? And, and that's really, really important dynamics of all of this to be uh, aware of. You said something earlier, you said, you know, um, I, don't, I don't have to come to church. And I think that places our church experience, our church life experience in a really, really good context. We don't have to come to church to be Christians, to be followers of Jesus, but we get to come to church and we get to be the church here gathered together, but also out beyond the walls. So last question then, and we'll wrap up with this. Um, where do you see or hope God will lead Guelph Citadel, this particular expression of his church, as we embrace this initiative? So I'll, I'll go back, and I want to acknowledge, first of all, that I, I'm a very specific type of person, right? I'm very extroverted. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I like to build relationships. I get energy from it. I know it's not the same for everybody. So I'm sure there are people in this building who are like, the idea of having my neighbors over exhausts me, mm -hmm. and, and that's okay, right? There are other ways to do this, and we're all different parts of the, the body, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. It is, um, like, I, I hope as we rebuild coming out of COVID, as more people start returning, as we have more opportunities to engage in our, um, in our community, and I'm just gonna <laughs> knock on that after I said coming out of COVID. Um, the, uh, I, I hope that we use this opportunity to connect on a deeper level. And it doesn't mean being best friends with everyone in the building. It doesn't necessarily even mean liking everyone in the building, but it does mean caring about the people in this building and caring about the people in our community as people yeah. instead of just, you know, saying hi and then going and hanging out with your six friends that you see every Sunday or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you um, for My sharing. Um, let's uh, show our appreciation to Chris for. <laughs> Thanks. For his uh, bravery and courage for coming up in front of all of you and uh, both. You liked it. He says, I liked it. I liked it. <clears throat> maybe we'll have more opportunities to have Chris up, up here on the, up on the pulpit, maybe. Um, so next Sunday, Be the Church Sunday. I hope that, you know, I hope you took time last month as we moved in to Be the Church Sunday to spend some time in, in prayer discerning how God wants you to do that. Um, how God wants you, who God wants you to connect with and, and reach um, in, in that special way as you've been gifted this time. It's once a month. Um, we're coming out of 18 months where we didn't have any of this at all. Um, but we also, we also don't want to the, make the mistake of running headlong back into an experience that many of us understand to have been very, very heavy and busy and, 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 and program-driven and performance-oriented. We want to stay away from that as much as possible. We want it to be as much as possible about real life and real relationships with real people. Um, and, and yes, we, we want to nurture our relationships with each other in the church. That's one of the, uh, of the three pieces of our, of our strategic objectives. There's up, in, and out. That in focus on how we nurture relationships with each other, so important. But that out piece, um, God calls us to be, and, 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 and churches, I'm afraid to say, churches miss this piece a lot. They get the, they get the up and the in, right? We come and we gather and we worship and, and we, we fellowship with one another, but the out often falls by the wayside, and, uh, and we don't want that to be the case because we are a called people, and we are called to be a sent people. The Great Commission says go. <laughs> it doesn't say come and just gather. It says go. So we do this stuff together so that we can be better prepared to go and reach the world um, with the love, the grace, the stuff we've been singing about today because we have a God who loves everyone. We have a, a Father who wants to hold people close. Um, and we understand who he is and how worthy he is. Um, so thank you, Chris, and uh, thank you to those of you who have uh, already shared with Leanne and I um, your Be the Church experience, and know that in the uh, weeks and months, uh, the months to come, we'll have more opportunities to hear from each other about what this has been like and, and what God is, is doing. Um, I'm going to invite you to remain seated. The worship team is going to come back up, and they're going to lead us in a song that they sang during, uh, during the prelude, Worthy is the Lamb.
you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love.
appreciate our tech people, because I am not that. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for being with us throughout this meeting. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end, and Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, as we leave this place, let us go out there and be the salt and the light. May we put into practice what we have discussed, what we have learnt. Help us to make a difference in this world for your glory. Lord, where we are drifted and said things that do not bring glory to your name, Lord, forgive us. May your grace wash over us. And Lord, may we continue to be a light to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join us. Please stand, and we will sing our closing song together. Uh, sing to the King. It's going to be fun. You might want to, you know, groove a little bit wherever you are, in your pews or at home in your living room. Um, we hope that you'll enjoy singing this song with us today. team is going to play us out, uh, but just a reminder, uh, as you leave, there are offering plates uh, by the back doors. When you do leave, we just uh, remind you the center sections from the back to the front first uh, to leave out through the center doors, then the outside sections, same thing from the back to the front. You guys can leave out the center doors as well, and uh, offering plates are there as, uh, as well as those um, Brighter Futures envelopes. Don't forget, uh, if you're worshiping with us uh, online and you've got kids at home, guelphsa.ca slash kids at home uh, is where you can find worship resources uh, that you can uh, use with your family. And uh, don't forget to register online for the Blue Christmas service. Just go onto our website, guelphsa.ca, click the worship in person link, and you'll find the Blue Christmas service link there. Now may Almighty God make you faithful to his calling cheerful in his service and fruitful in his kingdom 
And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you. And may that blessing go with you. And may he use you as he brings you out to be the church wherever you may be. God bless. Thank you.